Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Laughter is a gift from God, and there are many reasons that cause us to laugh. Maybe you're one who's quite ticklish, just feet or ribs or maybe even the thought of getting tickled makes you laugh. Certainly, we laugh when we hear something funny, someone tells a joke or something hilarious happens. And then there is that laughter of joy. We hear wonderful news or we're on the receiving end of some great act of kindness. And so we respond with laughter. This morning we are going to focus on laughter. And specifically this truth, that our God always gets the last laugh. And we see that in our Old Testament reading for today. For the Lord himself appears to Abraham and delivers that word that about a year from that time, Sarah, his wife, would have a son. Sarah's overhearing this conversation. And when she hears that word, she laughs to herself. She laughs to herself and says, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, Shall I have this pleasure? Obviously, this laughter was not a laugh of joy. It wasn't a laugh of faith, rejoicing that finally the Lord had answered her prayer with a yes, that her and Abraham would have a child of their own. Instead, it was a laughter of disbelief and doubt and skepticism. But God restates the promise to Abraham. God says to her, even though Sarah denied laughing, God says, you will have a son. At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. God speaks this word of promise, and Sarah laughs. She thinks the idea of a 90-year-old having a son is hilarious. But it wasn't just Sarah that was laughing because before this event, if you go back a chapter in Genesis, you're going to find out that Abraham did the same thing. Abraham also laughed at the promise of God, the promise of a son. And again, not a laughter of faith, not a laughter of joy in what God said he was going to do, but a laughter of doubt, of skepticism, of unbelief. This is the promise that God gave to Abraham earlier. He said, I will bless Sarah, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless, you, bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. But like his wife Sarah, Abraham also laughed. Laughed at the promise of God. Laughed in disbelief at what the Lord had spoken. But our God always gets the last laugh. Just as the Lord said, because he always keeps his promises, Sarah did give birth to a son. And so what does the Lord do? He says, I'm going to tell you what to name your son. Call him Isaac, which in Hebrew means he laughs. Yes, Abraham and Sarah's son, the name of their child, would be a constant reminder that they responded to the word of the Lord with laughter, the laughter of disbelief and doubt. And yet when Sarah held her son, when God kept his word, on that day Sarah was laughing. At that point, no longer a laughter of doubt or disbelief, but a laughter of joy and celebration. When Isaac was born, Sarah said this, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. God did get the last laugh. Because our God always gets the last laugh. Because he 
keeps his word. Because nothing is too hard for the Lord. And yet, in a very real sense, when God gives his promises, you can say that the promises of God are going to be received with laughter. Either the laughter of faith or the laughter of unbelief. Either the laughter of disbelief that says, oh yeah, right. That's not going to happen. Or the laughter of faith. The laughter of joy that rejoices in what God has promised and the gifts that God gives. A laughter of joy. Grace and the mercy and the kindness of God. Abraham and Sarah both laughed to themselves in disbelief when they heard the promise of God. And we're tempted to do the same thing. We hear the promises of God, and there are many of them. And yet, instead of receiving those promises with laughter, with the laughter of faith, with joy and thanksgiving, we're tempted to laugh to ourselves in disbelief and doubt. Our God says to us, I am with you always. I will never leave or forsake you. What are we tempted to do? Laugh to ourselves. Well, if God is with me, why isn't he getting me out of this mess? If the Lord is there, there's no possible way that he can rescue me from the depths of despair that I'm in. Laughing to ourselves and saying, given all the sins I committed, no possible way that the Lord could forgive me. But our God always gets the last laugh. He gets the last laugh because he keeps his promises. Regardless of how those promises are received. Whether they are received with the laughter of faith. Or the laughter of disbelief and doubt and mocking. And ridicule. For God's word is sure. When he speaks. It's going to happen. God did get the last laugh with the birth of Isaac. And it was a miraculous birth. A 90-year-old woman conceiving and giving birth to a son. And yet that birth looks ahead to an even more miraculous birth. Another child of the promise. The birth of Jesus. Isaac's birth was miraculous because his mother was 90 years old. Our Lord's birth miraculous because he was born of a virgin. And my guess is in the 700 plus years between the time that God spoke the promise to Isaiah that a virgin would conceive and give birth to a son. And this son would be no ordinary child, but Emmanuel, God himself, God with us. In those 700 years from when God gave that promise to when he fulfilled that promise on the first Christmas, my guess is there was a great amount of laughter. Again, not the laughter of faith and rejoicing in the fact that God was sending the Messiah. But again, a laughter of doubt and disbelief. Virgin conceiving and bearing a son? Yeah, that's going to happen, sure. A baby that's actually God himself, Emmanuel, God with us? Can't be. But God always gets the last laugh. And it happened just as he said. 
the child of promise was born. The virgin did conceive and give birth to a son. The baby is Emmanuel. God with us. Throughout our Lord's ministry, there was a great amount of laughter. Again, sometimes it was laughter and tears of joy because our Lord had rescued people from their helpless and hopeless circumstances. There were a good amount of times when our Lord was laughed at. When he was mocked, when he was ridiculed, when he was faced with the laughter of doubt and disbelief. One such occasion, the house of Jairus. His daughter had died. The house was surrounded with mourners. They were weeping. They were crying. But amazingly, their crying turned to laughter. But the reason their laughter, the reason they were laughing was not because they were rejoicing that Jesus had arrived, not because they knew that Jesus would do some great thing. No, their laughter was at Jesus. It was mocking Jesus. It was ridiculing Jesus. It was a yeah, right kind of laughter. Yet, that day, our God again did get the last laugh. Jesus entered the house raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, and when he gave their daughter back to mom and dad. Oh, the joy. Oh, the laughter. The laughter of faith. Laughter that comes because our God is good and gracious. Because our God keeps all his promises. Think about Good Friday. A lot of people laughing that day too. People standing at the foot of the cross saying, the king of the Jews, yeah, sure, he looks like some king. And their laughter saying, if you are the son of God, come down, save yourself. Satan and his minions, they were laughing on Good Friday. In their pride and their arrogance, assuming that they had overcome the Son of God. But our God always gets the last laugh. And even in death, he gets the last laugh. His joy-filled resurrection on the third day proves that he won the victory over sin and death and the devil, that they have no power over him. For he had triumphed over them by his death on the cross. Our God always gets the last laugh. He did with Abraham and Sarah. He did at the cross as well. And since we belong to the Lord, we also get the last laugh as well. It's true in this world, people may see us and they may laugh at us. Again, that laughter of doubt and disbelief. Oh, look at those Christians over there. Look at those simpletons. Look at the foolish things they believe. Look at how committed they are to their faith. but because we belong to the God who always keeps his promises. We too will get the last laugh. In fact, Jesus promises us that very thing. He says, blessed are those who weep now, for you will laugh. I think a lot of times when we think of eternity, when we think of heaven, think of joy, we think of peace, think of bliss, we think of comfort, we think of rest. But whatever is on your list, what you think heaven will be, make sure you add the word laughter. 
because eternity is laughter. Endless joy. Endless celebration. Endless laughter. Because there is no sin or suffering or pain. Endless laughter because we are in the presence of the God of all joy. Because we are with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Endless joy and laughter because God keeps all his promises. Isaac was a child of the promise. And even though that promise was met with laughter by both Abraham and Sarah, God still kept his word. One descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the ultimate child of the promise. Miraculously born of the Virgin Mary, laughed at, ridiculed, mocked, Rejected, but in the end, our God gets the last laugh. As our Lord triumphs over sin and Satan by his death on the cross. You also, you also are a child of the promise. Sons and daughters of Abraham by faith. And your name. My name can rightly be Isaac. He laughs. She laughs. Because that's our future. Because of all the gifts and blessings that our Lord gives us now. Because of all the promises that he speaks to us. Promises that are sure and certain. Even now, in the midst of difficulties, we laugh, we rejoice. We know we'll be laughing forever in the presence of our God, who always gets the last laugh. Amen. We respond with, to the Word of God by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 158. Please stand. 159, I'm sorry.